Hello everyone and welcome to our weekly devotions. How many of us enjoy sitting in a garden on a summer's day, listening to the birds and wildlife around us, soaking up the sunshine and appreciating the plants and flowers that display their beauty? I have to admit, I am one of those people. And yet, our garden in all its colour and beauty is not down to me. I'm not the one who does all the hard work. I leave that to Jamie who enjoys gardening. But over these last few months, I have donned on the gardening gloves, picked up a spade and helped by pulling up a few weeds. Jamie has had to give me some guidance though on what are weeds and what are plants and I think I've done okay. But saying this, I'm amazed how many weeds do grow amongst the plants and however well we get rid of them one day, they still seem to poke their heads up and appear once again. Today we give a warning, beware of the weeds. I'm not referring to those weeds growing in our gardens now, but the weeds in our everyday lives. Jesus spoke about those weeds in a parable which follows the parable of the sower that we looked at last week. It is entitled The Parable of the Weeds and we read it in Matthew chapter 13. Rod and Sue are going to share these verses with us just now. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted the good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, the farmer explained. Should we pull out the weeds, they asked. No, he replied. You'll uproot the wheat, you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles and burn them, and to put the wheat into the barn. Jesus then gave an explanation to his parable, and we read this in verses 36 to 43 of Matthew chapter 13. Then, leaving the crowds outside, Jesus went into the house. His disciples said, Please explain to us the story of the weeds in the field. Jesus replied, The Son of Man is the farmer who plants the good seed. The field is the world, and the good seed represents the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the harvesters are the angels. Just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Thank you Rodney and Sue for leading us in that Bible reading. Jesus gives a very clear explanation here and highlights what each part of the story represents. Jesus is the farmer who plants the good seed in the world. The good seeds are those who, people who love and serve him. The weeds are those who are used by the evil one to destroy the good things that are growing and producing fruit in the world. At the end of time, the harvesters, who are angels, will separate the wheat from the weeds. The evil one's crop will be destroyed, but those who have grown in the goodness of God will experience their eternal reward. As I was thinking about this parable, two warnings came into my mind. Firstly, as followers of Christ, we live in a world that is far from what God created it to be. 
All around we see the work of the evil one trying to destroy God's plan and purpose for his creation. We live and work alongside such people who are influenced by the evil one to cause destruction, disunity, hate and division among one another. And sometimes we feel like we are in the centre of a, a spiritual battle between what is right and what is wrong. It is in times like these that we are encouraged all the more to stand firm and strong in our faith. To be deeply embedded in Christ, allowing his example to live out in us. Jesus faced opposition many times and this led to his painful and humiliating death on the cross. And yet he boldly stood by his Father's will. I have come, he said, that you may have life and have it to the full. There were many weeds growing up around Jesus trying to destroy what he had been sent to do. But Jesus claimed the victory in the end by rising from the dead and offering the fullness of life to all who believe. The warning in Hebrews chapter 10 can help us if we are faced with such challenges. This is what we read in verses 32, 35 and 36. Think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful even though it meant terrible suffering. Do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now, so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. These verses remind us that we too will gain the victory in the end of time if we hold on to our faith and allow God's work in and through our lives so that we grow and display the fruit of the Holy Spirit as we live for him. And no matter what tries to knock us down, Let's stay strong as we claim God's promise of eternity in his presence. The second warning may be harder to digest and can be deeply personal. We may have to ask ourselves some difficult questions and in doing this accept that some areas of our lives need to change. Here I am speaking about the weeds that are deeply embedded in our own lives those areas where the evil one has taken control, that character that is not reflecting Jesus, those actions that are not what God intended for us, and those habits that have started growing out of control and are taking over. Maybe we find that we need to do a bit of spiritual gardening, and the good news is that we can ask for God's help with this. Through his Holy Spirit, he can help us to get rid of those things in our lives that shouldn't be there, so as to make room for all that is good to flourish and bear fruit. Again, Hebrews gives to us some words of wisdom in the first two verses of chapter 12. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. May we have the courage to do exactly that, as we allow God through his Holy Spirit to dig out all that is not of Christ in our lives so that we can flourish and grow and be more and more like Jesus, harvesting from us all that is good and fruitful. The parable Jesus told is a warning to us all to be vigilant as we seek to grow in him. May we be aware of our own actions and the way that we live and seek always to bring honour and glory to our creator God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and the way in which you can teach us so much through it. Help us to stay strong in you despite whatever the evil one uses to knock us down. May we cling to the sure and certain hope of your promised eternal presence. Please forgive us for those times when we have allowed the weeds to grow instead of the wheat. Help us to see the difference and not be afraid to prune back 
all that is preventing us living a spirit-filled life in you. May we live to please and honour you, fixing our eyes on your perfect example, so as to reflect your likeness in all that we do, in all that we say, and in all that we are. Help us to grow in you, and allow the fruit of your Holy Spirit to enrich and empower our lives daily. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Goodbye, and God bless you all.